Reflection can be investigated using a ray box and a plane mirror. Remember that reflection is when a wave reaches a boundary between two different media and then bounces off it. We can investigate this using a mirror and a ray box. The mirror is a flat and polished surface, which makes reflections much more controlled and easier to observe. Then the ray box produces a very thin beam of light. Most importantly, the light won't spread out and will only travel in a single direction. So we can direct this thin ray at the mirror. We call this ray from the source to the reflective surface an incident ray. The ray will then reflect off the mirror surface, forming what we call a reflected ray. Now, how do we describe the directions of these two rays mathematically? Well, to answer that, we should first look at what we mean by a normal to a surface. The normal is a line drawn at 90 degrees to the reflective surface. So in this case, our normal to the surface would be this. It's a perpendicular line making a right angle to the surface. Because we use a flat mirror, this normal is easy to draw as we don't have to deal with uneven surfaces or imperfections which would change the normal. But what does this have to do with the direction of the wave? Well, the angle of incidence is the angle between the incident ray and the normal. So for this example, the angle of incidence would be this angle here. We normally label it using the letter I. We measure against the normal instead of the surface, as measuring angles against a curved or uneven surface would be pretty difficult. Now we can do the same for the reflected ray. The angle of reflection is the angle between the reflected ray and the normal. So for our diagram, this angle here would be the angle of reflection. We can represent this using the letter R. But why do we want to measure these angles? Well, the law of reflection states that these two angles must be the same. We can write this as the equation angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. It's important to remember that we must measure these angles against the normal and not the surface itself. We can also write this law algebraically as I equals R. This is a rule you may be asked to recall or use for simple problems during your exams. So we've seen that it's easiest to demonstrate this rule using mirrors and light rays. But does this mean this is the only time these angles will be equal? Well, actually, this law applies to all waves. Let's look at a common example of a sound wave reflecting off a building. This type of reflection is called echoing, which is a word you may be asked to recall in your exam. We can draw a line representing the path of a sound wave to the building and then another line for the path of the reflected wave, or echo. Again, if we draw in the normal to the surface, in this case, the line perpendicular to the wall of the building, we'll see that we have two angles. The first is our angle of incidence, I, and the second is our angle of reflection, R. These two angles will be the same as given by the law of reflection. But if the sound wave is echoing in this direction, why do we still hear the echo? It's because the sound wave doesn't act like a ray. It's not a thin straight line, but a pattern that spreads out like this. So the wave hits the building at different points and is reflected in different directions, including back towards us. Thanks for watching. If you want to take your GCSE revision to the next level, head over to launchpadlearning.com and check out our smart learning platform that's been designed to get you top results in your exams. We cover your whole specification and make revision fun with interactive quizzes, easy to follow videos and more. You'll be kept motivated by your own AI tutor who's here to support you every step of the way. To check it out for yourself, click here. Or click here to keep watching a selection of the videos from our full GCSE physics course. See you there.